Okay, Maria, are you ready? <laughs> Emily Gamas, everyone. <laughs> Essentially, I want to know why, like, the relationship between two adults, like parents, or affects the way that a child views and acts in their own, like, potential future relationships. So my personal story. These are my parents. That's the only picture I found of them. They're kind of old. But, um, so, like, when I was little, I always thought that my parents were, like, soulmates. Like, they were meant to be. And because they met, like, when they were 12 or 13, and they've been dating ever since. They're actually kind of old, they're like 50. <laughs> so they've been together ever since. And they never went to high school together, but they lived right like near each other. So it was kind of cool to me how, even though they never went to the same school, they were kind of always together. They always made things work. So when I was little, I always uh, had like these nightmares of how, like of, I always had nightmares, sorry, of them divorcing. So I would always run to my parents' room and they would always come for me and say, that's never gonna happen. So, um, that would happen and I would get over it. But as I grew older, I seen them fight a lot more and I seen that my parents, uh, they were both abusive to each other, both like physically and verbally. And they would always like fight more in front of us. Only like my closest friends know that my parents do go out a lot. Like a lot of them are like, oh, you're lucky that, you know, they're never home, you can go out whenever you want. But I'm actually not. So as I got older, since they would fight more like I was kind of always on my own, and like when I would, when they would actually be home, the only time the only things I would hear them say is like talking about divorce and like selling the house and like moving away from each other. So that was kind of scary to me, hearing that like you know the nightmares I once had were like coming true. And um, so since they were never home, I'm the youngest, but I feel like I had to take care of myself a lot, and I had to grow up like too fast that I was like more mature from my age than what I should have been. So my research, um, according to Neil Strauss, uh, he says that there are three types of ways that um, a child can grow up. There are functional bondings, neglect, and, and enrichment. And the functional bonding is like the ideal relationship that you would have between your parents. You know, when people would say like, oh, I'm close with my parents. We have a good relationship. I tell them everything. They're my best friend. And neglect, neglect is, um, Neglect, so when your parents would abuse you or you would just feel lonely all the time, when you're anxious, when you don't have a good relationship with them. And enmishment, it's, um, it's the, the definition of enmishment is a, a difficult situation, like when you're stuck in a difficult situation and you don't know how to get out. So that's when your parents would be too dependent on you and they would expect you to like comfort them and to help them when they're in certain situations. And you're a child, you wouldn't know how to like take care of you. <coughs> so overall, this means functional bonding leads to secure attachment. So because of the security that you have when you're with your parent, you would know how to do how to be in a relationship. So since you're so secure with your parents and you know how to talk to them, you would have uh, you would know how to understand your partner better. You would have communication skills. You would know how to listen, and you would know when the right time is to do certain things. You would know, like, you you would just understand your partner better because you've had that relationship before. And uh, neglectful lifestyles lead to anxiousness. It was kind of interesting to me because just yesterday I was talking to a teacher here, and I was telling her my why question, and she said that it was interesting to her that I was researching this because she said that when she was growing up, she witnessed her parents' um, like relationship, that her father was a womanizer, and he constantly cheated on her. And even now to this day, she's still scared to be in a relationship because she doesn't want to be with someone that's like her father. And um, also, the collectible lifestyles, um, so they lead you to be anxious because you never know when your partner might strike at you. So when you're a child and you view your parents always fighting and being abusive, you don't know when your partner's gonna do the same thing, or you you don't know uh, when one day your partner will wake up and say, oh, I'm gonna do this to my partner, like I'll cheat on them, or maybe today like I'm gonna hit them, or I'm gonna go off on them. So, and, and that lifestyles lead to avoidance or attachment. So 
So this is like enmeshment, like, you know, it's hard to get out of. So when you're enmeshed, you're either the person that's too attached or you're uh, like trying to avoid the other person. It's when someone's like either too needy or too clingy and it's something that you need to get away from. And um, do any of you sometimes feel like you're obligated, like you were ever obligated to take care of your parents or like that you grew up too fast? Yeah, right. So this is something that an enmeshed lifestyle because like when you're a child, you're not, you're supposed to live your childhood normally, but it's, it's not fair to someone who has to grow up early and has to take on the roles or responsibilities of an adult. So more research. Um, I looked up something. Oh, actually, before I start, how many, um, how many of you guys have like younger brothers or sisters? Right. Okay. So, like, have you ever been in a situation where, you, like, say a swear word, and like your siblings repeat it, and you get in trouble for it? Yeah. yeah right. So, <laughs> kids are always watching. Like, whether it's you, like, or your parents, kids are always watching, and they're always paying attention to what you're doing or what you're saying. So, when parents fight. Children, they process the negativity and they take it in and it affects them emotionally and uh, physically. So some of the symptoms that children face when they watch their parents fight are disturbed sleep, anxiety, and lack of focus. And uh, overall, children perceive themselves as negative and externalize their anger. So this is why children become bullies or they hurt their partners in their own future relationships and they just they don't know how to express their feelings because they've never had someone who shows them the right examples of how a relationship is supposed to be. And my interview, so I interviewed my best friend, her name is Mariela, and so she's only 19, so, um, so I asked her a whole bunch of questions about her own personal life and how things were with her and her parents. She has eight, seven other sisters, with her it makes eight total, and she said that she thought her parents were in love and that they were meant to be, but her dad was never really there because he was always going back and forth to Texas for <laughs> business. But um, she found out recently, like two years ago, that her dad was always going back and forth for business because he had another family in Texas. So um, overall, he has 11 children between two women, and he, he was also put in jail. So ever since then, like uh, my friend Maddie, her mom, like has not divorced her father because like she feels that they still belong together, that they still need to be together because like that's all she knows. So my friend had a, she dated this guy a while back and at first they had a really good relationship but as they grew, as they made a couple of years, they always fought and he was always like manipulating her and she didn't know at the time but they, in their two years of dating, she dated someone else for about nine months. So to her, when she found out, she kind of thought it was just like her parents' experience. And even when she found out that he was with somebody else, she still kind of didn't want to leave him either because he was all she knew. She was just like her mother. So she kind of took on the same relationship as her mother did. And she currently thinks her daughter, she's about a year old. So she kind of thought that her parents' relationships affected her because she took on the same role as her mom. She only stayed, she stayed with the same person because that was all she knew. So my solution, it was to find someone that you deserve to be with and someone that you trust and someone you feel comfortable with. Uh, also remind yourself that you're not too much or you're not, uh, you're not enough because you are. And that make sure you communicate with your partners and make sure that they understand you. And if you need it, um, don't be afraid to go for therapy. It's really good to talk to someone about what you're experiencing because you don't want to be in a, an abusive relationship or end up with someone you don't want to be with.